If you enjoy this please like and subscribe, the show, Leave It to Beaver premiered on CBS TV on Friday, October 4, 1957, and continued on network television for a total of six seasons, with the final episode airing on June 20, 1963. Each of the six seasons consisted of exactly 39 episodes, a hefty number when compared to current seasonal standards, CBS carried the show for the first season only. For the final five years, Beaver was a part of the ABC TV schedule. All of the episodes were filmed in black and white, with the first two seasons being filmed at Republic Pictures Studios, while the last four years were produced on the much larger backlet at Universal City. The Leave It to Beaver storylines were always very simple and uncomplicated. Which is probably a big reason why it is so charming and appealing. No major earth shattering disasters ever befall the Cleavers. Nobody ever gets hurt, except an occasional scraped knee. The parents, Ward and June, rarely fight about anything serious and never threaten to leave each other, and above all, these characters really seem to care about each other, without getting too sappy about it. All of the above-mentioned traits helped make Leave It to Beaver what it was each week in 1957, and what I believe it remains today, a good, clean, fun, uncomplicated half-hour of entertaining television, starring Jerry Mathers as Theodore, Beaver, Cleaver, Tony Dow as his brother Wally, Barbara Billingsley as June, and Hugh Beaumont as Ward, the excellent cast of Leave It to Beaver was a well-chosen group in my opinion, while it's true, I suppose, that the acting was a bit on the stiff side on many occasions, I still think that this ensemble did quite well on this show. A sense of true believability and realism finds its way quite comfortably into each of these episodes. Toss into this cast grouping the very funny Richard Deacon, who portrayed Ward's friend and co-worker, Fred Rutherford, plus Ken Osmond as the ever-sarcastic Eddie Haskell, Frank Bank as Clarence, Lumpy, Rutherford, Rusty Stevens as Larry Mondello and all of Beavers and Wally's other various friends, classmates, and schoolteachers, and you've got a really first-rate supporting cast of characters to build stories around. Right out of the gate in season one, a whole bunch of top-notch episodes are on tap, with some of my favorites from the first year being, The Black Eye, Tenting Tonight, Beaver's Short Pants, Party Invitation, The Bank Account, Train Trip, The Perfect Father. Beaver Runs Away, and my number one fave from the rookie season, The Haircut, which has Beaver getting scalped by Barbara Wally in one of the funniest episodes of the whole series. There's also the funny Captain Jack episode, which was the very first show to be filmed, but was the second program to be aired. Captain Jack has Wally and Beaver sending away for a pet alligator, and includes the very funny scene where Minerva, the maid who is never seen again in the series, comes running up the basement stairs screaming, Help! A monster! There's an alligator in the basement. This is followed by Ward Skeptical and Alligator. LOL, Captain Jack also has the distinction of being the very first episode in television history to show a toilet on screen. The tank portion of the cleaver toilet is shown, not the gasp bowl itself, smiley face in fact, it was the toilet scene in Captain Jack that kept that episode from being aired by CBS as the debut show of the series in late 1957. But LITB show executives, including writers Joe Connolly and Bob Mosher, who authored a great number of the episodes during Lip's six-year history, including Captain Jack, stuck by their guns and won the toilet battle with CBS bigwigs, and thus Captain Jack, toilet scene intact was approved for network broadcast one week later, being aired on October 11, 1957, as Leave It to Beaver episode number two, and yet another winning season one entry is entitled simply, Lumpy Rutherford, where we get our first look at Clarence Rutherford, known to most people as, Lumpy, or, The Lump. You'll note how Lumpy goes from being one of Wally's feared enemies to one of his best friends as the series progresses, the music, the famous Leave It to Beaver opening theme was composed by Dave Kahn who was interviewed briefly for one of the bonus featurettes in this DVD set. The title song written by Khan is called The Toy Parade, and it went through two versions during the six-year lifespan of LITB. The original version composed by Khan is heard at the beginning of every episode in seasons one through five. The theme was then given a facelift and was pepped up for season six, with a much jazzier instrumental arrangement being used during that final year of the series. I, myself, kind of like both versions of Khan's theme song. 
Each rendition has its own individual appeal, some people might not realize it, but Peter Rugolo, the composer who wrote much of the incomparable music for the 1963-1967 TV series The Fugitive, also wrote some original music for Leave It to Beaver. I have no idea exactly what music cues he wrote for the show, but information at imdb.com says that Rugolo composed music for these episodes of LITB during the final season of the series in 1962 and 1963. The background music in the LITB episodes is another thing that is just perfect about this television series. I think all of the music fits the show to a T. It even seems to me that the music matures right along with Wally and Theodore as the series progresses into its later years. The background musical themes and cues that were used for seasons 1 and 2 would not sound quite right in the later seasons, but it is ideally suited for the first two years, for example. Take the music that is used for the first season episode, Water, Anyone? When I watch that episode, I always feel as though I have climbed into a time machine and have traveled back to 1957. I am then immersed in the Cleaver's world on a hot, summer day in the mythical town of Mayfield. And the music seems to add a great deal to the, the immersion, the, the background music in the first couple of seasons wasn't written specifically for Leave It to Beaver. However, much of that same music can also be heard throughout many episodes of the Universal-produced TV series Alfred Hitchcock Presents, which always seems a little weird when I hear it on that show, because Hitchcock series and Leave It to Beaver are about as opposite as you can get. But Hitch very often had his tongue in his cheek, which is no doubt why he chose to use some lighter, comical music in his TV series all about murder and mayhem, and some of the Beaver music is included in the first season of Hitchcock series which dates back to 1955, two years before Leave It to Beaver ever made it to American television screens. So, apparently when LITB came down the pike at Republic Studios in 1957, they merely grabbed some stock music from the nearby Universal Studios Music Library and used that for a lot of the incidental musical material, but, regardless of where the music came from, somebody made a good choice, because Beaver wouldn't seem like Beaver without its well-placed background music particularly in the first two seasons. As mentioned, the original Leave It to Beaver pilot episode, It's a Small World, which originally aired on April 23, 1957, has also been included in this shout. Set. It was first aired as an installment of the syndicated anthology program Studio 57. And it's a darn good pilot too, in my opinion, with a good storyline, unlike a lot of other series-launching pilots, I know that a lot of people don't particularly like the Beaver pilot very much, but I myself think it's a pretty good show, which does a nice job of introducing the series and the characters. I actually find myself returning to watch this pilot show quite a bit, I will say, though, that it would have been nice if Hugh Beaumont could have been included in the pilot's cast too. His presence would certainly have made it a better program, to be sure. Because Hugh's portrayal of Ward Cleaver will live on forever as one of the top TV dad performances there ever was, both Barbara Billingsley and Jerry Mathers co-star in the Small World pilot, but different actors played the parts of Wallene Ward. Paul Sullivan portrayed Wallene Casey Adams, a.k.a. Max Showalter, filled Ward's shoes, a 13-year-old Harry Shearer, famed voice actor on The Simpsons, also was featured in the cast of the pilot episode. It's a small part for Shearer, but he was very good as Frankie Bennett, an Eddie Haskell-like smart aleck. I was impressed by the naturalness of Harry's performance. Leave it to Beaver veterans Richard Deacon and Diane Brewster are also part of the Small World cast, although not in the same roles that they ended up playing in the series. Deacon's part, in fact, is a fairly extensive one, as an executive for the Franklin Milk Company. Some of my other favorite episodes from seasons 2 through 6 are listed below. You'll notice a preponderance of episodes centering on Wally here, especially in seasons 5 and 6. The shows that focus primarily on Wally and his friends in the latter years of the series are, in my view, a tad bit better than the Beaver-oriented shows from those same seasons, the writers-slash-producers of the series, Joe Connolly and Bob Mosher, obviously realized that Tony Dow was becoming somewhat of a teen heartthrob and therefore wrote many episodes featuring Wally as the center of attention during the last two or three seasons, season two, Happy Weekend, Wally's hair comb, the shave, Wally's new suit, and most interesting character, dot, season three, Teacher Comes to Dinner, 
Beaver takes a bath, Larry hides out, Ward's baseball, and Beaver takes a walk. Season 4 Eddie spends the night in the soup, Beaver won't eat, Wally and Dudley, and Chucky's new shoes. Season 5 Wally's car, Wally's chauffeur, Wally's big date, Wally stays at Lumpy's, and Beaver's long night. Season 6 Wally's dinner date, Wally's practical joke, the all night party, Wally's license, and Wally's car accident.